Welcome to the Trading Lounge and the Day Ahead Report. And um, look, there's not a lot of change. Uh, the positive thing is that the uh, market, the Dow Jones, is uh, sticking to the 13,000. Um, as I mentioned before, what we uh, it's just a bit tricky around whole numbers because big orders sit there and we're headline driven at the moment and uh, we're going through the process uh, apart from the, the fiscal cliff situation, which the sentiment seems to reveal that uh, some deal will be uh, made, but you just never know. But um, the employment figures are the, the, the employment figures, the manufacturing and, uh, and rates have been the big things this week and the uh, NFP, the non-farm payrolls are tonight. The ADP figures on Wednesday giving us a positive lead into uh, into, into fr Friday's figures last night's jobless claims was positive as well uh, as as expected from the ADP figures. So it 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 it, it is positive, um, but we it, it's normal to see when a market arrives at a number like this is to see. Uh, the swings get larger and larger. Now, they're normally contained uh, in the beginning uh, between the first minor level above uh, in 3.1 here and uh, the 12.8, but then they can start to swing into the uh, 13.2 and 13.3, which is all part of group one here, one, two, and three here. Um, so until we've found support on on top of group one here, on top of uh, 300 here, uh, then the price or the market rather is still connected to the 13,000 in a way. Uh, so until it finds support on group one, then the price uh, can still fluctuate in this whole range through here. So we need to be aware of that. The wave count here suggests that we are seeing further upside. I just don't know if we're going to see, you know, from the non-farm payrolls, if something comes out of left field uh, and is not positive, then we can see uh, another move down through here. But even this little move in here seems uh, positive as we've been looking at yesterday through here in terms of uh, up for one and back for two, up for three. We knew that it would fold back uh, uh, into the uh, closer back down into a wave four, but it looks appears like we've got a little five wave structure here. So this can be an ABC here as well. I just just not sure what's going to come out of those um, and coming out of left field. So uh, we'll just get sort of past that. Uh, once we, if this moves up through here and makes a new high here, then that adds another layer of uh, of of a positive market in terms that it would have five waves up because as I mentioned yesterday, we've only got really this is only three waves up and that's corrective. That's, that can be counted as an A and a B and a C because it hasn't really made new highs here. Um, we're just looking for a five wave structure in one, two, three, four, and five here. If we get five waves here, then we'll get another correction and then we'll get another five up. So if we get five here and then we'll get another five so that's the positive side there um, we're seeing the European markets uh, edge higher quite nicely and uh, this is the DAX here so we were looking yesterday at this little five wave structure moving up through here and we knew that there'd be a pullback and the idea was to buy on pullbacks using obviously group two in this case and um, moving up and adding above the 75 as well. You can continue to add now that we've got support on the top of group one, the 10, 20, and 30, one, two, three. Um, so uh, we should be seeing new highs above the uh, midpoint here into group two up through here. The FTSE is not far behind it. The Australian market, um, it's got the, it's, I can see that we've got a positive wave structure here, and I know that we're up. We're at 4,500 as well, which is the midpoint between 4,000 and 5,000. So being above this now this time it really flips the whole market to the upside. Uh, the correction at the 4,500 here uh, can get larger. That's what I'm concerned about. Uh, as mentioned before, the price being on top of Group 1 here, uh, the 45.30 is what we're what we're looking for. Once we've got that, we know that then psychologically the prices the traders are separated from the 4500, and they start to think of the 45.50, and they start looking up at that point once we've got support there. But until that's there, um, it, until we've got support on that 45.30, then this price can come down and test lower. 
the distance above here can be the distance below here. There's normally equality in wave A and wave C here. This is in three waves here, so it does leave space for this to push straight up here. If this was in five waves down here, then we would be definitely seeing something down here, but we can still get a flat correction through here. Look, if support is found on 45.20, then scale in there, or you could probably even go long from here and keeping the stop under here, but it is really the 45.30 that we're looking at, but building into group one is fine, but just don't over trade with the NFP figures coming out tonight, and also coming into the weekend as well. The weekends these days now, we're more globally connected, are, uh, uh, you know, it's a long time, so and anything can happen uh, in meetings uh, outside the market space there. But um, look, it's positive here. Uh, metals are, are reasonably positive as well. The copper market has, has come off into wave four. Let's have a little look at that as that will have some sort of bearing as well. So the copper market here, um, as I mentioned, just what we've been chatting about um, this top of wave three coming into play and wave four unfolding, which which wave four is unfolding now. Uh, and uh, a couple of things to point out here is that um, uh, group two is 65, 72 and 80. So we're sort of, we're, we're in that there now. We've got the first high above the level. So we're seeing a correction here. Uh, we can expect this to pull back the 38.2%, um, which brings us in around the 361 area here. So we can look at the 360 here. We can look at obviously 360, 361 and also the, this trend channel support coming through here as well. But in one way or another, we're going to see a wave four here. And it's wave four is normally sideways and complicated, either in three legs to keep it simple or five legs to be more complicated like triangles and double zigzags and so forth. But once it's completed, then we'll see a push up above the uh, 372 there. Uh, this this high here has been pegged by, um, by 61.8 retracement levels. So coming in on the daily chart here, just for the bigger picture here, we'd be looking at uh, this coming in here. That's why that's going to be held. So it's going to be a tough nut to crack this one. So um, we'll just uh, you know be, just just be aware of, of 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 that situation. So we really need to be on top of that shortly because that's where the supply starts over over here. The volume, the sellers will be sitting there. So. Uh, just have a look at BHP to see in the US see how that's settled in. So that's still settling in quite nicely. Nothing dramatic happening here. Still built this trend up through here. We'll still need to still need to sort of get some sort of foundation on that 72 there. And it could certainly drop lower back into the 70 before it gets back up there again as well. So there's still, you know, there's still a lot to, to go here. Um, but it's just pointing out that as we have been for a while, that it is positive and um, obviously that flows through to um the resource materials sector and uh, and also uh, to the Australian dollar uh, as well. And now that China's got some stimulus happening, 586 billion uh, US dollars. Uh, so there'll be some, you know, there's some support there and um, yeah, all good. Um, the oil market is not following stock and it's um, moving to the downside there. So this is the daily chart here, just seeing that. And this is the importance of using the levels as well because 90 is a medium level and you wouldn't really go long until you had 90 as support if you're up in this sort of area through here in breaking this down uh, through here we can see that uh, oh this is just Brent crude by the way um, so Brent uh, here this this move up this is the two hour charts are low here this moving up through here is a, is a bit corrective in terms of an A and a B and a C uh, to here in terms of the one, the two, the three, the four, and the five. A bit dodgy, but it's there, uh, and it's moving down through. So we can expect lows to be taken out through there. Um, looking at the one that we follow here, the WTI here, it's still in the trading range. It hasn't broken out of this range here, but the key here, once again, the levels just come in. You know, you need to use you need to trade from price. The Elliott wave is uh, is one thing. Uh, it's good for getting the direction, but uh, when it comes to the setup, you need to trade from the price, and the levels are just a way to explain price a little bit better. Um, so we can see that that's retested on the 80 there, so you wouldn't have been long at that point. You'll be looking to go short at that stage. Um, this is still 
this is still opening to the downside. So if we were looking at this as an impulse wave to the downside, you can see from just this point here, this would be down for one and back for two and down for three, back for four and down for five. So it's still got lower to, um, to unfold in through here. And yes, it may find support at the 85 here, but it could certainly also take out this low here. We know that this move up here is a corrective rally because it's got overlapping wave structures and that's why it's been labelled in a corrective manner of ABCs. Uh, so, um, you know, it's not sort of unexpected, uh, but it can drop lower from this point. Do I have that? Um, yeah, so you can see that this is a strong little third wave coming down through here. Um, so there'll be more to there'll be more to be had here as such. So yeah, and gold's the other one as well. Base metals uh, uh, and gold aren't working together that well at the moment. Um, there's a, there's there's a lot of non-correlated markets that normally correlate and not correlated at the moment. The S and P five hundred, for instance, and the euro and the US dollar are not correlated at the moment. They're all sort of haywire. We'll see after the N the NFP figures uh, tonight to see if they um, pull back in line with one another on an hourly basis. But they're pretty hectic at the moment. Um, anyway, the gold market here. We're looking at yesterday. We mentioned. Uh, uh, that we were looking for a retest from the, from these lows here at the 1680 level back into the 1700 here, and that's that's unfolding at the moment. And we we do see this is a corrective move at the uh, coming back into here. Yes, it can come to the fourth wave of one lesser degree to here. Uh, so, but just just keep an eye on this. If this really struggles from here, then we're expecting uh, new lows down into the 1672 area. And silver's got the same pattern as well, and it's basically vibrating at uh, the um, at the 3300 here so if the uh, 33 becomes the resistance here in due course it, it pop its head up through here and if it comes back down and finds itself locked under here <clears throat> then look to short from that area and also use group 2 in here as well 65 72 and 80 if the 32 72 becomes the retested resistance then give it a then then work that number from that point there. Let's have a look at the US dollar as it's uh, rallying at the moment as expected. Okay, the US dollar uh, index here uh, is pretty much going on track in terms that, um, as you know, we've been looking for, well, we've got this ABC correction here, so eventually we would see a move down, taking these lows out through here, and um, we're looking down, we've got five waves down here, looking at wave one, coming back for wave two, and then down to wave three, four, and five down in this direction here. Um, I do need to point out, though, I'm always mindful of any other wave counts, and the idea in using uh, uh, Elliott wave. It's very easy to uh, to, to once something is, is is happened. It's easy to 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 go to, to work it out. But to work it out as it's unfolding, there's always uh, well, not always, but um, in many cases, there's there's a um, an array of possible wave counts that need consideration, and they need to stay on the table uh, until proven otherwise. And one of the things with corrections, which is one of the weakest points in Elliott, um, is that they can just expand on themselves. So, in in this in this uh, this this correction we've got here, for instance, this A B C here, this that that can just simply double in size. So this 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 uh, A B C here um, could be just the same as uh, having a little A B C in here. And what what I'm saying here is that this this A B C here could just be the A wave, then we have a B wave down to here, and then a C wave up here, getting larger still, and then folding down. And if it has a move up through here, it will be in five waves up here as a C wave, like this guy here. So um, it's, it's not on the cards yet, but uh, it's just worth pointing out, to be mindful of it. Um, so it's something that we that we can look look at, um, but it would be five waves up here, one, two, three, four, five for wave one, back for wave two, then up for wave three, probably to here, wave four across here, and wave five up to here, and then down through here. So that's a real possibility, but we'll just stay with what we've got at the moment, and we'll be looking uh, at this here a little bit closer in terms of this is what we're kind of expecting here. 
basically an, an A and a B and a C. The 61.8 retracement level is up around the 80.75 area, so basically group two there. Um, at this stage here, we're looking at it coming back to the fourth wave, one lesser degree, so the 80.50 was our call on this. This move coming up through here, if we have a little closer look at uh, that as well, uh, in terms of... Uh, Yep, in sort of, well, five waves really. Um, at the moment it's in three waves. Um, so in, at this stage it's a corrective wave. We could look at this as an A and a B and a C and it could be finished, you know, in, I need to go into a, a you know, 15 minute thing there, but I can see that that will try and get support on group one there. Um, but basically if we assume that it's a wave three and the reason for assuming that is that it's a very strong and powerful structure. So it's more like a wave three than in terms of personality than a wave C. Uh, so um, we should expect a wave uh, three to come in here somewhere, then a wave four, then a wave five up to this point here. So the other markets will be doing the opposite to this, of course. And then if that's the A wave, then we'll see a three wave move back in a B wave. B waves are always in three waves. And then we'll see a wave C up here coming into the 61.8 area up here for the wave two there so it, it and once it's finished here then we'll see it roll over so this will be an a b and c rally is what they call a five three five structure and then it roll over from that point now if we're wrong and it's going to go further up then we'll be seeing five waves up here for the a wave as as wave one ABC back for wave two, and then a really powerful wave up here for wave three, like this wave three here, a powerful wave three up here, and a four and a five. So um, we will know when this when this C wave starts to move up here in five waves, we'll be able to tell by the personality of its structure where we are. But as we stand, it will be something of this nature here. And the opposite to this is, of course, the Euro, slightly different count. But um, as I was mentioning the other day, we were looking for a top coming into play around the 131 and then a pullback into the possible 129 area. And that's happened rather swiftly, um, but it's there and it's got the same sort of mirror image count of the uh, US dollar. So if we have a look at that a bit closer here, uh, as you know, we've just been tracking this little wave count up through here. The 38, so uh, sorry, we've got the one, the two, and then the third wave to here with five waves in it, the one, two, three, four, five. And in Elliott terms, the wave four normally pulls back to the fourth wave of one lesser degree, which is this guy here, which is just below the 129. But the one, the 38.2, which is the textbook type of thing as well, really brings us in where the price is now on this uh, on this channel trend, trend line that we've left here. Um, so yeah, you know, so what I like to do with this is is you know is is look at the internal structure of of the wave coming down to to pinpoint a better target price for this as well but what also why I'm here and before we look into this a bit further is that that um, you know we are working across the 130 which is the top of minor group one um, and normally the distance above is the distance below so that's something in terms of the swinging but also as well we'll be seeing you know just drawing this out a little bit further through here is that um, you know once this uh, once this correction is done through here, it will be like an A and a B and a C wave through here, four wave four, and then we'll see a wave five up through here. But once that wave five is completed up through here, then we're going to see a larger ABC correction. So we'll be looking at uh, you know something pulling a little bit deeper down into here. So an, an A and a B and a C and then up. So we're going to be spending quite some time around here. So just thought I'd mention that in terms of um, you know looking for longer term trends. Uh, so it's, it's sort of not there yet. It's got a lot of sort of vibrating to do across the um, the 130 there. If we can just look at that move down on a smaller time frame here on a 15 minute chart from the from the high point here. We're looking at down for wave one, an A and a B and a C for wave two, and then we're looking for wave three coming down here. I haven't pulled that apart yet, but I kind of see that, you know, the strong part of the, the wave is here and here. So there's a beginning and a middle and an end to a trend and a correction. And we can see that this is slowing down through here. So, uh, well, end of session as well and so forth. But uh, the NFP figures coming out tonight will also influence this as well. Um, 
I forgot what else is coming out of Europe tonight, but anyway, double check that. Um, but look, expect to bounce off the 129.30, the top of Group One here. Uh, wave Four pulling back 38.2% of um, of Wave Three here. So if that comes down to here, we can expect that Wave Four to come back in. Here's a retest of 130, which should be logical, and then we'll see another move down here for Wave Five of Wave A only. So five waves down for wave A, the same as the US dollar in reverse, and then a wave B moving back up 61.8% uh, to, to, to the upside there. So if we bring that down here somewhere, then we'd see that come back up and retest the 130 again here in the B wave, and then a C wave down, and then, then moving up from there. So um, yeah, look, uh, you just really need to navigate using the sub-levels within all of this. Okay, the Australian dollar. Um, we're a little bit unsure about their wave count on the Australian dollar, uh, unfortunately, um, but uh, it, it it does appear to be sort of positive, and it's chipping away at uh, at the supply at 105, which would be you know it would be quite a strong line in the sand, and. I was sort of looking at this as being five waves up. As, as you know, I've mentioned this before in terms of the one, the two, the three, the four and the five, and even the fifth wave here has got the one, two, three, four and five in here, a bit of a mirror image of uh, this whole structure within itself here. Um, little overlapping wave structures here, overlapping wave structures here, same sort of wave four here, same wave four here, much the same sort of structure, just same pattern, different size. That's all. So um, look, it 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 is it is edging to the upside, creating good supports as it's moving to the upside, and that's what trading is. It's a game of support and resistance, moving from one number of the same degree to the next. Um, and we're at number five here at the moment, five being the second strongest number in the market. So look, we're looking at a reaction here, and um, this reaction here, if we get five waves down through here, yeah, then we'll get a three wave counter trend and then another five down. So if we look at this on a smaller view here, uh, first of all, we've, we've, you know, we've come a 20 minute chart, we're above the uh, 105 here, spiked above there, you have to expect some, this is the arrival, this is the reaction, and now we're looking for support. In this, from this little structure through here, the 61.8 retracement level is around here in group two, so we can should be able to find support here. We should see a retest of the 105 in here shortly, um, but I still need to pull that apart further. We'll do that before the US session opens. Um, but it, we've got to work out if there's five waves in here. If there's five waves in here, a retest in three, and then another five down through here. Um, I, look, I just suggest there's nothing. There's not going to be a lot of movement in here um, because it's 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 just uh, arrived at the 105. There is buying in there that's going to attract attention. Um, there's profit taking going on here. We're looking for support. Support will come in straight up at Group Two here to start with, 65, 72, and 80. Um, any failing of support here, if the 104.72 becomes a resistance, then expect the price at the 104.50 uh, here. Just coming back to the, that other chart here for a moment, if I can, if I can find that again here. The um, this 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 five wave structure up here the 61.8 retracement level will be around the 104 here uh 150 percent 104 here and just a bit lower here so there is really strong support at the 104 there so any larger correction from here from the 105 would be at the 104 there normally in in this here would see a series of um uh, corrective pattern to, to get down here. Look, let's just what I what I normally do is once once we get to the arrival of a, of a particular number, I like to allow the first leg down to play out. I like to see if it's in three waves or five waves because out of the eleven or twelve corrections, if it's in five waves or three waves, those eleven or twelve corrections uh, can be halved into into six corrections um, so then I can work out if it was in three waves which way it's going to go if it's in five waves then we're going to get another five waves down after that so let's just allow this to to unfold here uh, if you're if you're day trading then 
you just need to uh, work the levels. And um, in working the levels, if it's looking for support, if the price comes down through here and then comes back up and finds support on the 72, then go long from there. So that's not support there as an example. That's that's um, it's come up through here. It's tried to find support. It couldn't do it at this stage. And then this is a clear break through here. So that's fine. So it needs to test lower first. If you get that test lower and then come back up, that's what you're looking for. So if it can come down first and then get back up there, that's fine. You know, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for that support. Buying on lows is not the way to go because you're actually buying in a downtrend. Um, but you can buy on large numbers as such uh, on for, for turning points because there will be some sort of reaction. It's just uh, how far will it bounce is, is always the question. So, all righty, well... Um that's about it. The robo trades that we've got on, you do understand that um, you know markets are vibrating around, indices are vibrating around large numbers. The DJ at thirteen thousand, the S and P at fourteen hundred, the ASX at four four five. So there's not a lot of trending going on. Sure, there will be stocks, individual stocks doing their own individual things, and we'll try and catch those. But it's not it's not a point in time where you would be over trading you know so under trading uh, would would definitely be the, uh, the the way to go um yeah so um it's 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 uh, there's no no huge trends at the moment Alrighty, well that's enough yakking so um good morning good luck and enjoy the day ahead and the weekend cheers <laughs>